the one he'd been dealt. I don't know. Um, and it helps account uh, for the psychological cost, I think, of so rapid a rise. He was impetuous. He was arrogant. He knew it all. The smartest guy in the room. He was also insecure and foolhardy. Um, it didn't take much uh, to send him uh, into a spin. Uh, un unlike Jefferson, uh, whose uh, blood pressure must have been about 130 or 62, uh, who slept a lot. Uh, it's a different, altogether different uh, psychological uh, makeup. And yet, there's a curious incident in, the, in the, his time at King's College. In the spring of 1775, it really heats up, and there are, there are, we don't call them gangs, but we call them organized mobs, I guess, but people in the street making a lot of noise and giving people whose reputation as Tories was well known, which was the case with Miles Cooper. He had even written a couple of things uh, that managed to get around. And so Cooper became, becomes a target of a, uh, a mob coming uh, up to, uh, to the college. Um, and they, as they enter onto the campus, um, he's, uh, he's up on the fourth floor, and he's trying to get out and move. <laughs> he had plans. I mean, that map has Manhattan is much narrower in the, in the 18th century. So he was only two blocks away from the Hudson. And if he could make it to the Hudson, he could get out into the Kingfisher, the HMS Kingfisher, and he'd be safe. But it was going to be a close call. And Hamilton, apparently, Hamilton never took credit for this, uh, but he never denied it either. Some King's College student stood in the way of the mob coming up on the staircase and talked to them uh, long enough for Cooper to get away. And Cooper got away and never came back. Uh, ten years later, he wrote a poem. That Cooper was that kind of guy. Uh, and he talked about a heaven-sent youth who had protected him uh, at the moment uh, of his greatest danger. I think that was Hamilton. And if it was, he's covering his bets. <laughs> OK. Um, Theodore Roosevelt, uh, after coming back from uh, San Juan Hill and the Spanish-American War, talked about his crowded hour of military exploits. Uh, Hamilton had seven years of crowded hours of uh, military exploits, uh, exploits. When the Second Continental Congress uh, called for the colonies to raise militias, Hamilton was there. He had started studying ballistics with one of these medical doctors uh, when he was in college. And nobody knew much, but he knew more than they knew. Uh, so he becomes eligible now, he's 20, uh, to become an artillery captain in the volunteer militia that's formed in New York City in February of 76. And then in August, uh, he catches the notice, not of somebody, he catches the notice of George Washington. If you're going, if you're going to, hello, wave to somebody, <laughs> you, know, you don't screw around with a sergeant or even a captain, uh, you go right for the big one. Uh, Washington at the Battle of Harlem Heights um, brushes up against Hamilton, uh, who's uh, acting very much uh, in, in command of a size a uh, group of, of soldiers, volunteers at the time, and then sees him again up in White Plains, and then when they retreat across the Hudson into New Jersey, there's Hamilton. He seems to be in front, and if he's in front with men, the men are listening to him. So Washington um, knows what he's doing. Um, he approaches Hamilton, and, and I don't think ask is the right verb, um, tells Hamilton uh, that he's been now assigned to uh, Washington's private staff uh, as an aide to camp. Um, and that's the position uh, Hamilton is in until uh, 1781. He writes most of the letters, command letters of Washington during the war. He's by his side at every moment, although he occasionally breaks away to try to get in the action. Um, and in 1781, he finally confronts Washington and must have said, I'm guessing here, that the war's going to end and, I, and, and I've got to get really into it. 
and Washington accedes to that request, uh, and Hamilton is then uh, at the Battle of Yorktown in September uh, when the Americans do manage to hold off the British fleet, uh, and he distinguishes himself heroically uh, in command of a uh, collection of cannons. Uh, he's then uh, a lieutenant colonel. Uh, this is rapid advancement. But then that's enough. Um, because the year earlier, he's made another move. Not in the military, but up the social ladder. Uh, he courts the daughter, one of the daughters, of Philip Schuyler, uh, one of the rare uh, patriots from upstate New York, and one of the richest landowners, uh, Eliza or Elizabeth or Betsy uh, Schuyler becomes Hamilton's wife. Um, there's some question that's been raised uh, by uh, Miranda in his Hamilton, uh, whether uh, Eliza was the second choice uh, because his, her, her older sister, Angelica, um, was at least as attractive, at least as rich, but unfortunately unavailable because she had just married. Um, but Hamilton throughout his married life uh, corresponds with both of them, and it really is a kind of comfortable ar arrangement. Um, whether it extended beyond correspondence or not, not clear. Uh, I suspect it didn't, um, but who am I to know? I, 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 I thought Clinton was innocent. Uh, <laughs> when he said, I didn't know that woman, it sounded right to me. Uh, uh, okay. uh, but before, before he put away his, his, his uniform,